Hey, what's up, everybody? Special episode coming from Las Vegas with Ben and I and Ryan. Uh, I think this podcast was an awesome one. We talk about some of the new scientific breakthroughs on the best tricep extensions, uh, which one's going to gain you the most, most amount of strength and muscle hypertrophy. Talked a little bit about uh, stimulants, uh, modafinil, kratom, a few other ones, uh, and got into some really exciting news uh, that we're going to share here today uh, that's going to be fun, exciting, terrifying, as well as many other things. So check in this episode. Uh, the special Vegas edition, and I uh, hope I get to see a lot of you folks with Ben and I out here uh, in Vegas, and we'll catch you soon. You know that there has had to have been some sacrifice, whether it's time or nutrition or whatever it is. Recording of myself talking about having a relationship with my chest. <laughs> I'm Ben Kelly. I'm Dave Kennedy. And this is Hacking Health Podcast. Hey, what's up, everybody? Another week, another podcast. Uh, we're actually here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, Ben's first time here, so um, it's uh, it's been an adventure already. It's uh, Sunday. No, it's Monday. It's Monday. Monday. Time has no bearing here in Vegas. Um, it doesn't. I've been here since we got in on Saturday. I feel like I've been here for like ten days. Right? Doesn't yeah. it seem like it, it does. It does. Yeah. I have no like. It's weird because like we were um, at dinner last night and I had no bearing on whether it was evening or day or night. Yeah. It was just was I eating yeah. It was dinner just, or was eating lunch or what yeah, was, yeah. What was going on? Yeah. yeah. Well, because I mean they keep the lights kind of similarly the same across the board, and you don't go out very often unless it's like you know you must. Because I I think I went outside for like an hour, but I was shaded the whole time and I still got burned. It was 113 degrees. Um, yeah, we great. were going to record this outside, but um, we both decided that our uh, skin complexion wasn't wasn't suited for being outside. For we were outside for like 20 minutes, or not even that. It was like five minutes. We're yeah. like, uh, let's go inside to do this. Yeah. So we're at the we're at the Cosmo at the moment doing the doing the podcast. But uh, what's your first experience of eggs, though, dude? Uh, I mean, so far so good. I feel like, and I will admit this openly because I think it's important to. Uh, I was chatting to Matt. Whenever I got here on, I guess, Saturday evening, I guess I was chatting to him on his Sunday morning. And I was like, there's definitely a, there's definitely a part of uh, a younger version of me that knows I could definitely lose at least a week of my life in this place if I was still as inclined as I was before. Yeah. Um, But I mean, so far so good. I feel like I've got many, including yourself, good um, Vegas tour guides. I think there's a lot to do. I think there's probably a lot of different Vegas experiences you can have. Um. But I mean, so far so good. The we got to train yesterday morning in Dragon's Lair, which is mm-hmm. someone that somewhere that I want, have wanted to train. That place was time. amazing. That was a very good. It was a really good place. Everybody was super chill. It wasn't busy. Yeah. Um, we had some like, seriously heavy stuff. We lifted some seriously heavy stuff. New PR for both of us, mm-hmm. and um, and it was cool. Cool about it was the um, the uh, the overall like vibe that the place had, and I think we spent probably you know at least two hundred bucks each on merch. on merch. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was a cool spot. I mean, I feel like if I ever own a gym. That it's that sort of vibe. So, yeah. I mean, it's like chill, really good equipment. Everybody's super knowledgeable, very helpful. Um, it was cool. Um, I've already eaten some really good food being here. It is hotter than hell. I found like four more pieces of equipment I need to order for my gym. <laughs> perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, but yeah, so far so good in Vegas. But I feel like, although I feel like I've been here for about 10 days, I feel like it hasn't even really started yet. So yeah. uh, a couple of guys have started to arrive at the Airbnb today. Shane got in on Saturday night. Todd got in this morning. Um, Andy, Adam, and Phil have got in. Um, Tyler's coming tomorrow. Daniel's coming tomorrow. So everybody is starting to arrive, which is another bit of excitement. Yeah. It's really cool what you built. I mean, uh, for one, uh, we went and got tattoos yesterday. So yours uh, looks way better than mine right now because mine's currently still got the second skin. They they recommended 24 hours to keep on. It hasn't been 24 hours yet. It's not my first tattoo. Don't worry. but yeah, I mean, I feel like that was that was a long time coming and just almost in line with pretty much exactly two years from when we recorded our first episode. Yeah. And I think that this will not be the first We Hack Health Tattoo that happens in Vegas this week. Yeah, isn't that cool? And it, the way we designed it, by the way, um, this is all kind of like, sp- we, we've been talking about getting a tattoo for the longest time. I've been ready time. for two years. You've been ready for two years. And, uh, You've been talking about it. <laughs> I have been, I have been. And then finally we decided, like, well, let's go do this in Vegas. And... I was kind of teeter tottering about like what the design was going to be, right? Uh, I couldn't decide if we wanted to do like the skull with the the dumbbells on it or the you know the the traditional one that we had when we first got through the hoodies and everything, yeah. and uh, you know the the circular one that you had that was the We Hack Health with the lettering around it and then the these you know smiley face with the X's on it. That's one I was kind of sitting uh, sitting on, 
But then I couldn't decide like, would I put it on my quad, you know, my arm, or where where I was going to go. Do you think that that circular one would be a hard thing to tattoo? Yeah, like it would need to be a very skilled. You'd have, you'd have to do that, but also it it had to be a lot larger as well because you're going to have to do the black outline on the and outside of it in order to do the yellow. Yeah, 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 yeah so yeah, it's, yeah. it's got to be much. He was, that's what he was saying to me, is it had to be much larger. So full back piece next time. Like <laughs> that's right, full back. Full back. <laughs> but uh, what, what I liked about this one, this design, if you look at um, Ben and I's tattoo, they're they're slightly different. The uh, the smiley face slash, you know, persona on the front of it's um, different. And that's to kind of represent our different personalities or upbringing who we are. And um, and so, like, if you decide to get a Hack Your Health tattoo and you're, you're super you know, passionate about what we're doing here, and obviously it's been part of your life, uh, you know, make your own design, make something cool that, that, you know, is just directly, you know, based off of your personality unique to you. So it's your own unique tattoo, but part of the whole, you know, hack health movement. So I thought that was kind of a neat concept to kind of introduce into it. And, and, you know, Erin, my wife got a tattoo. She got the trust sex smiley face. I was really happy uh, that she did that. Uh, finally, she's been talking about it for a number of years and uh, it's just been good, been a good trip so far. got a lot accomplished already. Um, hit the gym twice at the Cosmo um, so far. And, uh, and we did Dragon's Lair. I uh, skipped today because uh, yet I'm going to skip today too. Because I'm literally my body needs so it. <laughs> sore. I'm, I woke up this morning and I could barely get off my my uh, my bed into the shower. I was just like like hobbling along like an old man because like my whole it's the legs, hips, glutes, glutes and hammies most specifically because we decided to do 200 pound uh, each dumbbell we RDLs. The gym. Huh? We've completed the gym. We need to we, find we, a gym that has heavier stuff. Yeah, we need to find a gym that has 300 pound dumbbells so we can level up to that. Fuck, you know, maybe next year. Think you can do one? Think you can do one with 300 pounds? Yeah. Yeah, I think I could do. With straps, obviously. Yes. You have to have, like, that was the interesting part. I've never lifted a 200 pound dumbbell before. I've only done 150s, but they're, you know, when I'm doing the 150s, it's, it's, it's always downward, right? So you're, you're, you're not having to hold the full shear of the grip with, with that, with the RDLs. You know, you, you when you're picking up that heavy of a dumbbell, it, it, your wrists actually bear most of the burden there. Mm -hmm. So it, it, you know, they cave in and then you're basically holding like one, part of the dumbbell and it's just not desirable so we, we ended up using straps and that too which is fine to. which is fine though. yeah oh yeah no, no question about it but no I, th I mean back to your point about being a kill of, of what's built this i see thinking this just as i left the airbnb like it's you know i see the majority of like i've seen todd i saw him in new york i saw him in pittsburgh like i've seen him more than i see people that i live more than i see ran whatever i'm not in uh Whenever I'm not in Belfast, so it's cool that people are willing to fly in, come and hang out, and even like just being able to leave them in the Airbnb and people are excited for you know I can't wait for Todd to get here, I can't wait for Phil to get here. So, um, what's being built within that I think yeah. is very cool. Um, and also you know, I opened up, um, obviously I'm going to do some client coaching this week in Torture Gym, and I also opened up some consultation slots and some potential non-client. Wait, coaching Torture Gym is the name of the gym, not. But also, what's going to occur there? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what will happen there? Um. So it's cool to sort of have people reach out to me like that want to come and, and hang out knowing that I'm going to be here um, mm -hmm. that have followed the podcast or followed the hashtag or follow what we do. So it's cool. Um, I'm so far so good in Vegas. I'm excited to see what this week holds. Dude, I'll tell you, there's so many stories of people that we're seeing direct messages, messenger, that, you know, people that have like been hiding their progress because they don't want to be public about it because they're embarrassed or, you know, where would let themselves get to or they're not confident enough in themselves. And it's been so cool to see the success stories about, you know, how we're able to break things down for people to be successful, right? And um, I was actually playing uh, blackjack last night. Uh, Aaron, we got back from uh, dinner, and uh, I went upstairs and took like a 30-minute nap. And then I went back downstairs, and we played for like an hour. And I played some blackjack, and I was kind of telling the story. You know, the, the, the dealer, um, uh, the dealer's name was Angel, and he asked me, he's like, you know, what's what's the tattoo mean? And it hadn't been this this messed up or jacked up. It wasn't all bloody at this point in time. But um, he was like, oh, it's, it's hack health. It's a, a thing that... And me and my good friend and my, my personal trainer started in the cybersecurity industry. And I explained to him that I was morbidly obese and I was, you know, you know 315 pounds. And he's like, oh, my gosh, I would have never have guessed, you know, that he's like, you look incredible. And, you know, congratulations. So we kind of talked talk through it. And it's just, you know, <clears throat> people don't, don't, you know, people that we haven't reached yet are probably in that cycle of, well, it's just my genetics or it's just, you know, who I am as a person. I can't change it. And I think what you're seeing time and time again, and the science is really starting to show is that, you know, our bodies were never meant to design or designed to handle just food every single day and to be, you know, full every single day. And just, you know, how you can kind of curb that and fight that within your, your desire and urge. Um, and it's all possible. You know, you're seeing the success of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people so far. Um, and the people that have gone through your training program, you're continuing to be seeing their improvements. And 
and folks that you know phase off that still continue to have su yeah. success after. Even Paul, like again, I yeah. saw Paul. Paul is amazing. Just, yeah, yeah, looks like great. Completely different. Yeah, um, completely lean. You know, muscular, tech. good build. Um, you know, uh, uh, Ben Ten, who's training our, our classes here at, at Trusted Tech, our Purple Team class. Um, you know, he's been getting into weightlifting. He's been traditionally a, a runner, and I sat down with him. I talked to him. I built him a program and everything else, and, and just talked to him because. You know, he's just, he's got a really tiny frame. He's like, oh, I don't think I could ever, you know, um, get bigger. I'm like, that's not true. Like, here's the things you can curve to change it. And I saw him and you could start to see that V taper and that muscular build. And he's got a little bit of traps here and the quad, you know, the delts are starting to come out. And I'm like, dude, like you're on the way to, to everything. He's like, he's like, oh my gosh. He's like, I appreciate that. He's like, I just don't see it all the time. I'm like, of course you don't, but you're going to see it. Trust yeah. me. Um, but that's, but it's cool. that, that's yeah. the cool thing about both sides, like where you came from versus where I came from. That's both ends of the spectrum. Well, it's funny because Aaron and I were talking about, uh, uh, how we both uh, wear our clothes and I was talking about how like they had um, these really um, baggy shirts there that I don't like and she's like oh I bet Ben likes those because he likes the baggy shirts and I'm like yeah I like the tighter shirts so it's it's funny because like you know you grew up you know skinny and lean the entire time so you prefer more baggier shirts to fill yourself into yeah. whereas I prefer tighter shirts because I don't have the gut anymore hanging over right yeah. so it's kind of interesting how we both uh, are a bit different in every way uh, shape or form what we do mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah I think even like just to sort of touch on the, the people that we haven't reached yet, um, the guy that Adam introduced us to yesterday in Dragon's Lair, he was telling about the what we do and he was saying his brother was in cybersecurity and mm -hmm. it's like it's cool that somebody's actually making a change within the, the industry and making change in terms of like the, the narrative of what is naturally an unhealthy industry. So it's cool to sort of see more people speaking about it and show what we're actually doing. Yeah. So what do you have planned for the rest of this week? Um, I'm coaching... Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe a bit of Friday, um, which is going to be cool. The slots filled up like almost immediately, so that's going to be cool. Um, in terms of the evenings, I think I'm just going to be about. I'm just waiting to see what everybody recommends to do. Um, I'm going to host an event party, cook dinner for clients on Wednesday night um, at the Airbnb. Ryan's going to film some content. He's got some ideas for me to host a cooking, a cooking show um, because more content's what we need. Um, Get some training sessions in just sort of see what's going on i'm just this time around i think i'm just going to suss what actually happens at the conferences yeah um and then potentially plan something a little bit bigger next year yeah. depending it's such a good i mean this whole area is crazy but at the same time it's such a good way to get and you know see people casually the thing i struggle with is you know just making time for everybody right um you know everybody's like hey i want to meet i want to go and lift i'm like i appreciate that but like now's not the great time for that you know it, having to meet maybe go grab a drink or yeah you know, hang on a group setting. That's the best way for me to, to, you know, um, get to see folks. But, you know, I have, I have a lot of, um, you uh, have to work. I actually have to work. You know, I have, I see? have, I have three talks <laughs> I'm giving, um, doing book signings, uh, you know, meeting with a bunch of, um, our, our, um, a few of our board members from, from our PE firm is going to be here on the binary side. Uh, all of our folks at TS and binary are here. So, you know, just, you know, it's a great way to meet people, but it's also the chaotic times of everything. And, you know, what's, what's a good Testament though, is, the disciplines you put in, right? So when I'm going and I'm eating, um, I'm eating protein, I'm drinking protein shakes. In fact, I just had a protein shake before you guys got here. Um, protein you know, shakes for us? <laughs> I don't have enough, sorry, <laughs> um, just for me. Um, but um, I do have liquid, uh, I have the frog fuel upstairs if you need no, some. I'm good, I'm good. Um, but uh, you know, the, the discipline there of still having the crazy schedule, but also fitting in time to go get a lift in, fitting time in for myself, you know, fitting time in for my health, that's all super important for what I do. And I think, you know, people need to realize that, you know, regardless of how busy you are, we're all busy. It's making time for yourself to go and do it. And, and my wife is here. So, you know, obviously she wants to hang out and do stuff and go see shows. So I'm up at, you know, six o'clock in the morning, I'm hitting the gym and I'm up before, you know, either she's up or she, while, while she's just getting up and kind of getting ready. So, you know, it's, it's fine that time. Yeah. And I think the cool thing for me beyond you and I be on the podcast, beyond coaching clients, like I, I had a hack group call earlier on and I always go in with a topic and it was obviously around conferences and like how people navigate it and stuff like this. And I was like, you know, I wanted everybody to share what their tips are. Not everybody goes to conferences, not everybody travels a lot, but just to be able to share. And there's a couple of people who, Jason specifically, who travels quite a lot. And he sort of said since the end of last year, he's always made an effort to yeah. run a 5K at every conference. And he's at a lot of conferences. And like, it's cool that there are a lot of people doing that. And he was here last week for, I can't remember the name of the conference. He says there was 40 people turned up to run a 5K. And I was like, fucking fair play like i'm if you ask me to run a 5k i'm out but it's cool to see that they're making the time it's not all about going out and getting fucked up yep people are trying to find things that they can do to hang out and you know network and whatever else that doesn't involve alcohol um so it's cool to see that sort of shift beyond just you and i oh it's it's cool and it's interesting like um when we first got here the first day it was it was friday and um it was it was a real tight time crunch to get in between 
Uh, we'd landed. There's no direct flights unless I wanted to go Spirit, which I wasn't doing that again. Um, it's always a horse show every time we're in there. But uh, um, I flew, flew United, and it was United to, to Denver, Denver to here. And I had a very tight connection in between uh, with Aaron, and my, my dad flew to us as well. And so I didn't get a chance to eat, but I did have a protein shake, and you know, I was eating a protein bar. Well, when I got here, you know, to the hotel, like just a matter of I'm hacking, getting me ready. And then we had you know, plans later that night. I decided to order some room service and you can look at the options. And I'm very fortunate, obviously, to be able to do this. But, you know, I ordered a steak for lunch, you know, and that's what I ate, you know, because I was like, well, there's good protein. It's, it's whole foods. You know, I had some asparagus with it. And I had, to, you know, I asked them to get some whole wheat toast or some oatmeal. I think I got oatmeal with it. So, you know, I had like a nice meal I was able to, to, to focus on. But again, protein centric, focusing on what I'm trying to get from a macro goals perspective, just fitting it into my schedule when I didn't have the ability to do that before. Whereas I could have ordered a burger, I could have ordered fries, I could have ordered whatever. It's very easy. Like, right. I mean, the food, there's. Oh, it's there's amazing. A, oh, yeah, there's everything that you everything. want here. And I was actually talking about that again on the call. Like, I've obviously been in America for three weeks, I guess. We've been here for three weeks. Yeah. Um, I have eaten out every single day, but yeah. the way that I've sort of navigated it is I only really have like one big meal a day. So knowing that like we'll go out for dinner or I was out for dinner with my dad or whatever, and maybe have a shake during the day or maybe a protein bar, knowing that I'm probably going to over consume at dinner. And then I found a scale in the Airbnb and weighed myself and it was one pound heavier than I was when I left Belfast three weeks ago. And I've li literally eaten like whatever I want, yeah. you know, sushi, we've had burgers, we've had pizza, everything. And it's just about managing it and yep. not eating like an asshole all of the time. Right. Um, and just Would you look at yesterday when we ate, you know, I got the jambalaya and, you know, um, I had had a, what did I have for lunch? I had, I had a pretty decent sized lunch, but it was, uh, primarily chicken breast, uh, centric. So I had uh, chicken breasts, uh, with some, some hot sauce on it and some other things. And then when I got to, to dinner, you know, jambalaya, I just I maybe ate one third of my food. Cause one, I wasn't that hungry, but two, you know, I just wasn't going to pick out on a, you know, a bunch of stuff and get a bunch of desserts and things like that. Just managing my, my style, you know, uh, the other day before there's this, um, great place here in. Uh, at the Cosmo, I can't remember the name of it offhand, but it's a combination of uh, Chinese food and Mexican food. So you can order tacos and you know Chinese food. It's, it sounds weird, but it's awesome. So I'm like, like and sushi, carnitas. only <laughs> right. Chinese food, yeah. and Mexican. And they have these uh, these bao buns that are just absolutely incredible. You get these these two like young or um, older, like probably like seventy five year old Chinese women. They only speak Chinese. They don't speak a lick of English. They're from China. You know, all they've done is made these buns their whole life and came over here to the United States. And all they do is make these buns. It's incredible. They're hand making them in front of you. And you know, it's the coolest experience and they taste incredible. Best, best. So we have to go there then? I mean, I'll go there again, a whole, whole hands down. So we're going uh, after sure. the podcast. We're going after the podcast. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, again, ate those. And then, you know, the, the you know, for, for dinner, I focus more on a protein set your goal. So it's just, you know, hitting your macro counts while going on traveling. And you can do this in travel, you know, no issue um, as long as you're eating at the right places. And you don't have to pay an arm or leg. Like, you know, Outback Steakhouse, you can get, you know, a Victoria filet, I think it's like an either a, a eight, eight ounce or 11 ounce with sweet potatoes and, um, you know, asparagus or broccoli for like $25, you right. know? So, I mean, you know, there's, there's different options you have when you go and eat, you just got to make sure, Hey, maybe skip, you know, all the butter. If you have the macros for it, butter's fantastic from a fat and, you know, fat perspective. And I love butter, I put butter on everything, but, um, you know, if that's not in your account, you know, make sure you're counting your calories, but all doable within normal places you go to. Chipotle is fantastic for, for eating out, you know, rice, chicken, and, and beans. We can't go, go go wrong with that. The one thing that I will say, we got Chipotle yesterday after the gym, and I was like, God bless America. Like, we didn't even yeah. go anywhere. It could come to us. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, why the fuck? Like, how can you miss this stuff? Like, yeah. you can literally have whatever you want in terms of building out the bowl or burrito or whatever it is. Literally probably anywhere from 400 to 1,400 calories if you need it. Um Protein. I just had steak, chicken, and rice, and it was that was ideal. I do always double protein. Door, and everything. Didn't even need to go anywhere. Yeah, I do double protein. And everything. Yeah. Regardless of where I'm it's always double protein. So, but uh, yeah, so that's it's been a good trip, and I think uh, you know just getting started. Really, still have another you know four or five days here. Um, you know, and then I think Friday we take off. You guys will leave on Sunday, mm -hmm. um, but it's gonna be a good time. So yeah, looking forward to it. looking forward to, to Black Hat. We have our, our party coming up here, and uh, that'll be fun. And then uh, you know, call it call it a year. Until next year. Until next year. So one thing I want to hit on first was a knowledge bomb, and then we'll get into some some cool like oh, the main topic of today, I'm which I'm, and nervous I'm looking this, forward to this. Before we, we break the ice on this one, um, there was a new study that came out where they recently did a, um, a analysis on uh, what was kind of the best uh, tricep uh, workout or exercise that builds the most amount of muscle um, as you go on, both you know consistent with strength as well as muscle hypertrophy. And uh, what they found was, and this is one that I really actually didn't use that much, to be honest with you, uh, but I have completely switched uh, since then, is the, the overhead tricep extension. 
Um, so, you know, when you're doing an overhead traffic extension, if you're looking on the, 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 the YouTube side, you can see this, but if you're not, just I'll give you a visual. But, you know, when you're coming back, you want to be forward enough to make sure that there's always continual tension on the rope. And it does on a rope, you know, most preferable is going to be on a, on a, a rope machine, a cable attachment uh, with the, you know, uh, rope attachment to it. And, uh, you know, you want to keep your, your elbows tucked in as much as possible, like basically just hugging your head, you know, like you're basically smashing your head as you're coming back. And as you Everybody come up, he's just listening and not watching, stop right now and go and watch on YouTube. This giving a great <laughs> demonstration of <laughs> your head and you come up, you know, full range of motion and come back. Um, they found that based off of the leverage that you had over your head, it gave you the full range of motion while continuously, um, while, um, keeping continual, uh, time under tension on your triceps. And it had a, a 40%. Uh, um, increase in muscle hypertrophy versus other exercise movements, including the, the, the tricep rope uh, extension or, or, or pull down. Uh, so I thought that was a really interesting one. So I've completely switched my routine up just to do overheads start, uh, first starting off with, then I do kind of the rest of them, and then I just do burnouts and overheads. So I think I haven't read the study, but thinking from a logical how your body operates type situation, if you think about whenever you're training, you want to either work or both work between the fully contracted or fully extended position. So I would imagine. Whenever you have your hands back like that, your triceps fully extended. So you go from that point, there yeah. is tension on the muscle, like you said. And then whenever you come up to fully contract, you still got the tension. You can, If you set the cable up properly, you can get it almost in line with how your arm runs, mm -hmm. which will give you a better contraction through it. So it makes sense versus if you're like this, you don't get the full extension. So it's interesting, you know, that that's taken me a while to learn. And I used to, I used to hate RDLs, uh, dumbbell RDLs, because I was like, oh, these are completely pointless. Um, <laughs> Until yesterday. <laughs> well, <laughs> But I've, I've incorporated them a lot more. Um, and what I found, the reason being is I'm like, well, I'm, I'm deadlifting 600 pounds. Why would I take a dumbbell for 100 pounds or 50 pounds or whatever and do RDLs? It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, the truth of the matter, though, is, is that the range of motion, the, the hip flexing that you get, and what finally clicked with me, I think, is they always say, you know, get that stretch on, right? Now, that stretch is, is actually what we're doing all of this time. So if you're stretching a muscle, let's just say your, your legs are straight and you're, you're going down to bend your knees and you, you feel that in the back of like your, your glutes and your hammies, that's the stretch you're actually talking about you want to feel when you're actually lifting. You're basically stretching your muscle, right? And so if like an RDL, you know, when you're going down and again, keeping your back uh, in neutral spine, you know, not bending it over, hunching, or you're not in a different position, when you're coming down, what you're trying to do is actually like you'd be going down for a stretch. And I was explaining that to my, my son and uh, his, his buddy Colin was over. And, um, you know, Colin was going all the way down to his, his, his feet. I'm like, Colin, that's, that, that, that's not what you want to do. I'm like, think about this. Like, take the weights out and just, you know, casually just try to touch your toes. And where do you start to feel that stretch? And he's like, well, basically right below my knees. I'm like, exactly. So I'm like, when you're doing the RDLs, and when you start to feel that stretching of that muscle, that, that glutes and the hammies, you're in the proper position there. And then you start to pull up with that tension on that muscle and you're coming down again with that stretch, you're continuously battering that muscle to get it to the point to where, you know, we're, we're, we're signaling it to, to grow, right? We're telling the muscle it has to grow in order to do it. And those are the types of, of, of muscle movements you want to be thinking about as, as a stretch. So if you're going overhead like this, if I use my delt, you know, and I'm using my, my, my left hand to move up, you know, I'm feeling a stretching position in my shoulder at this, at this period of time. And as I'm coming down, you know, I don't go all the way to my side. I'm still keeping the tension on this muscle. And then again, coming up and stretching that muscle. So you always want to think of like range of motion and stretching that muscle in some way, shape or form that allows you to get that type of, of reaction and stimulus that the muscle then starts to build. And so once I kind of understood those concepts, everything else started to really make sense to me. Deadlifts, very similar story, right? You know, when you're coming down to deadlifts, the, 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 the reaction is to drop and kind of, you know, reset yourself and get back up again. Whereas you always want to keep, you know, tension on that bar as you're going through and keeping your muscles engaged in that stretching motion as you're coming up and pulling up and going down. Uh, sumo obviously being substantially better than than conventional. Um, I'd like to just pause for a second and uh, think back to yesterday when you admitted that you do need to get a, an adductor machine. Yes. So it would help with your sumo deadlifts. Yeah. So what so was I interesting with that, um, the adductor, the adductor and uh, abductor, uh, I noticed that when I'm especially going in, I, even on low weights, I can feel my abductors just like shaking violently because they are very weak in, in nature because I never so use the shake, them, right? The shaking is... Um, it's either an instability within the muscle or a part of the muscle that you've never trained before. Yeah. The benefit I would assume of both. It being, it could be. But the benefit of it being a part of the muscle that you've never trained before, if you imagine when you first started training, the like your training age when it's young, you can get more gains essentially mm -hmm. in, that, in that time period. So finding, I always used to look for those when I was training. It's like finding where I start to shake, where it's like I haven't trained that part of the muscle before. You can get sort of quicker essentially gains in that. So that's, I mean, I feel like 
have you ordered it yet or no no i haven't i um i i did um so there was also another study that uh, came out on the best uh gluten hammy exercise period and surprisingly it wasn't deadlifts i was pissed about that to be honest with you <laughs> Um, I'm a huge, obviously, deadlift fan. Because it's just something that you hit. That's again? my, well, it is something that I hate. So Ben would always program these since day one into my, my, my training blocks. And I'd always tell him I would do them, and I never did them. Um, and it, <laughs> so, so, so we're being honest right here now. Uh, but uh, it was, it was the, the hip thrusters. And, uh, and I used to do the hip thrusters. I, I really did. And I did find them to be a good movement. But it was just such a vulnerable position as a man, right? And, 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 and as a woman. I mean, it doesn't matter what position you're in, man or woman. It's, it's, it's a vulnerable position. Yep. I mean, you're basically like pumping the air for lack of a better term. And I didn't feel comfortable with that, right? Especially not in the gym setting. Um, but they had done some great analysis on it. And, and the muscles worked um, on those that the hip and glute bridge, you know, type of, of machines um, are phenomenal for, um, for uh, your muscle hypertrophy in that. Uh, and, and obviously, you, can, you know, the quadricep uh, hit as well. I mean, it's just an overall well, well done uh, workout. So now I'm in the process of getting a glute machine. So, <laughs> yeah. So speaking of clients not listening to their coaches. Yeah. We we do, we use. So what, let's, let's, let's preface first. So, so how, how uh, I think it's important for, for folks that haven't listened is that even when you're a trainer, you want a trainer. Yep. Right. And that was actually a hard concept for me to, to understand with you when I first went with you, because you'd mentioned your trainer. I'm like, wait, Ben doesn't know everything. Like he has to, has, he has to have a trainer too. I don't, that doesn't make any sense to me. It's like, you know, a teacher having a teacher. Right. But if you think about it, I mean, you know, I'm a CEO of multiple companies, of, you know, whatever, but I, I still have mentors and people that I rely upon every single day to teach me different areas of business or yeah. finance or whatever it ends up being. So it makes logical sense that you always want to continuously push yourself, your knowledge and everything that you're doing. Right. Um, and I think that's an important concept to really, really think about on that is that a trainer always needs a trainer. So you've always had a trainer since, since I've known you. Um, and so you recently just got done through uh, your most recent trainer and, mm -hmm. and you had this, this idea of, of a possibly a new trainer, right? Well, what happened was Matt and I went to the, the Simon Sinek and Stephen Barla event. And I'm not sure fully of the context. I'm not sure if this, I'm not sure if this is fully accurate, but from my knowledge of what they said, they basically said that one of the steps, if not the last step in the Alcoholics Anonymous program is that you help another alcoholic. Now, I'm not saying that it's the same situation, but in the evolution of me coaching clients, the goal is always to get them to a place that they can manage everything by themselves. They have the knowledge, they have the understanding. And what better way to test that out than to get them to actually coach someone else? So we're going to have an experiment. And Dave's going to coach me. <laughs> so every uh, every exercise uh, that Ben hates will definitely be in there. Anyway, any exercise? It's going to be run the rack uh, okay, any, starting off no, for There's for no a... exercises that I hate. <laughs> and that's a problem. It's like you're not really vulnerable to that, that, that attack. But uh, there are definitely ones that I hate. But... Uh, <laughs> But uh, uh, it, I think it'll be interesting because, you know, one, uh, I know you very well, obviously. I know your habits. I know uh, when you cut calories, your food network uh, obsessions. <laughs> uh, you know, I know. You're you know, like blocking my Wi-Fi. Can I do the nice? I can't watch the food <laughs> network. Like, fuck with me on that level. <laughs> I think for me, like I've thought about it, and Rams asked me the other night, like I'm nervous or excited about it. And I think uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm nervous because fuck knows what way it's going to end up. But I'm excited on a number of levels because I think for me, the best coaching relationship that I ever had was with Callum, whenever Callum coached me. And it and was, you're really close to Callum. I mean, you, yeah, you, yeah, he, had, yeah. he had taught yeah. you a lot, you know, yeah, throughout yeah, yeah. the years. Yeah. I, I think if I think back to why it's like, I have so much respect for him within the industry and it's like, a, it's almost like I, I felt like I was representing his brand and I wanted to be like a part of it. So there's always, and I always wanted to do real good. Like I want to be told a good job. And I think I have that level of respect for you I and, and what you do. Yeah. Um, so I want to do a good job, and there's always there's obviously the the relationship that you have as well. Like I don't want to let you down the same way that yeah, I don't yeah. want to let you down exactly hundred percent. So I think it'll be good for, and we know how we are when we train together. Yeah. Like if we said yesterday, like if we train together all we, of the time, yes. we'd be absolutely fucked all the time. Yeah. But also like on a different level in yeah. terms of like progress. So I think there's a lot of elements to why it's going to be a positive. Um, yeah. it'll be good for me as well to see how much I've actually been able to teach you in the past two and a half, three years, um, and how that sort of transition, but also me knowing you and how you go on and everything, what rabbit holes you will go down, what research you will do, and what things that I can actually learn from you that I can do in my own 
coaching with other clients. So it's not just yeah. going to be an experience for me. It's going to be everybody who comes after as well. Well, it's funny when, when we kind of broach the subject, I, my, my brain was already racking, uh, you know, all jokes aside on, you know, making sure that, and, and it was actually a thought pattern, man. Like, do I have the time to dedicate to this to make it successful? Because that, that's that got to be obviously important. I don't want to let you down on that side. Yeah. And I do. Um, and, and it's one of those things where, you know, I'm able to be able to provide some different perspectives that you don't see necessary from people that are training you that, that, you know, aren't, you know, as, as in tune with you or who you are as a person or your habits or things to that effect that, you know, maybe we can improve on or that you can bring back into the, you know, the groups and, you know, be able to provide different perspectives on that you maybe didn't think of or something like that. So I think it's going to be a good exercise all around. I'm going to have a ton of fun with it. I'm going to torture the shit out of you. Um, I think, like you said, it's, it's legs every day. <laughs> I'm fine. Though. Um, I love ben comes out I like, like string uh, uh, arms and like these massive quads that are about to <laughs> <laughs> I think the it's like you said, you know, I think the the one unique thing that you and I have for the podcast and everything that we do is we have both sides. We have the client and the coach side. Mm-hmm. So you coaching from a client perspective will give me a different insight to sort of your thought process or potentially anybody others any of the other thought process. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with success. a little bit nervous. Um it's giving you a lot of yeah. control over pretty much everything. Um but I think we have a a pretty long term plan. With it, I think with anything like I always look at it the same as with a client. Like I'll look at a a year. So I mean, I'm in for a year to see where we can get to between essentially now and and Vegas next year. Um, Keep going because I'm gonna I'm gonna find that tweet I or that original message that I sent to you uh, on Facebook Messenger. Uh, you sent me it in our chat or the other day. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up now. So keep going. Um, so yeah, I mean. For me, I want to make sure that I can commit to it as well. And I have the expectation of this is going to be a year-long commitment and where I can be essentially when we record this podcast in Vegas this time next year. Yeah. So, you know, what I'm looking forward to is obviously Ben and I know each other now over the, the past, you know, two and a half uh, years. But when you look at uh, when I first re- re- uh, reached out to Ben, you know, I was um, in this this group. It was Dad Bod Transformations. And uh, I don't think you're allowed to solicit you know, people in there. I think it's kind of like the rules against it, right? That's so like you, I kicked out. Yeah, you kicked out. <laughs> but you, um, I reached out to you. Like you had actually sent me a friend request, and it's fine. I'm like, who the f is this guy? You know, and I look at this picture, and it's like you all shredded up in on everything. And I, I click on it and look at you know, kind of your approach and what you're thinking. I went to your website, um, and uh, you know, it's just like you know, I was really looking for somebody that could understand me, right? Uh, and that intake process that you did, I think, was was really good because. It wasn't um, about you. It was about me, right? It was about what were my struggles? What was I trying to accomplish? Um, you know, it's funny because like I'm, I'll read you the message first, but you know, my perspective of where I was at and my knowledge where I was at was so far off uh, in comparison to where I'm at today and what I actually know about myself. <laughs> um, and I think that's what people go into it with is like, well, I know myself. I know you know, I should be doing cardio and eating less or eating, you know, just veggies all day long or just, you know, starving myself for 30 days. Um, and you really don't know your body, right? And I think that's been the coolest part about this whole thing is that, you know, when I went on the bulking phase, like a bit of a time, I was able to shred it right off again. I'm so confident in my ability, right? Um, because of the knowledge that you've been able to teach me. And so I think I'm looking forward to doing an intake here on, on, on a podcast to kind of understand. I think I kind of have some good ideas, but it'd be good for everybody else to hear you know, your story, where you're at, and then go from there. But this is what I sent to Ben, our very first message uh, that I ever sent to Ben. Uh, ha- didn't know him, uh, lived in Belfast. I'm like, well, maybe I can get a, you know, do a, a an online trainer. I think that'll be fine. I didn't want to go to like a gym that I had to commit to. I didn't know. This is kind of like my last ditch effort. So I said, uh, hey, Ben, I uh, appreciate the friend request and interesting timing here. I mean, getting pretty serious into getting into shape and hitting the workout six days a week. A lot of Orange Theory and have a full gym in my house. Something I lack is a formalized coach and nutrition help. Really looking for a long-term life change and to stay committed and cut down on fat and bulk up. Looks like you help others with that and would be interested in knowing more. Thanks for the friend request and great timing. And um, I think I, I didn't. I don't have the full message here, but it starts off with, "Hey, man, awesome that you're wanting the best thing time in yourself and something like that." And then you kind of went on, you know, your whole whole approach there. But well, I think but, to touch on that, yeah, you did get those things. Like you have the knowledge to invest in yourself. You have shred down and body fat and bulk up. So we did all yeah. of the things, everything that everyone. And yeah. as you, whenever you sent me the other day, like if there were ever one message that were to impact so many lives, like we obviously didn't know at the yeah. time, but yeah. beyond just myself and yourself yeah. and everybody, complete transformation on both of our lives. But not just that, from yeah. everybody else that, yeah. that came along after. Insane yeah. to think about. Well, it's cool. I was, I was sitting at um, 
we're, we're, before we got uh, kicked out of uh, the uh, the foundation room because we didn't have the right clothes and uh, Ryan had seven thousand bags of them. <laughs> My fault, by the way. But uh, um, but uh, 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 someone had walked past me. He's like, Dave. Oh my god. He's like, I see your pictures on Twitter, man. But he's like, seeing you in person, insane. You're huge. I'm like. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I love that. That's great. But if you had to say that to me six years ago to punch you in the face. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? So so let's do let's do this. So we're gonna kick this off. Um I, I assume when you, when you get back to Belfast, we'll 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 uh we'll kick this off formally because uh actually I think we should cut off today. We're gonna do six training six days six days, uh six times a day, uh starting <laughs> off. But no, I mean in all seriousness, when you get back, um, you know, we'll 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 do a formal way here. But I think, I think just starting off, like you've always been lean in nature, no longer there now, you've, you've, you've gained in knowledge. Obviously, uh, I am coming in at a uh, inferior level as far as, as, as training in some ways, right? Um, but where do you want to go as far as your goals, uh, you know, and, and where you want to be at, you know, in the next three months, six months, and, you know, two years, 10 years, 500 years? <laughs> I think the thing that, that I always come back to with myself in, if I look back at the last I don't know, coming up to 10 years of training. The one thing that I'll always say, if, if I were to go back and do things slightly differently, I'll never say I regret because, you know, I, just, I don't think there's any point, but if I were to go back and do things I know what you're going to say too because it's exactly the same thing for me, but go ahead. If I were to go back and do things differently, I would spend more time trying, a longer period of time building muscle instead of every single time, every single time that I yeah, was it. didn't I see. I should have whispered in there before it. <laughs> Every time that I was lean and then whenever I didn't have a six pack and I could only see four abs, I started to freak out and I was like, oh, fuck, right, no, uh, no, I'm going to be lean again. Like, actually, I think I'm one of my superpowers is the ability to get lean um, and switch my mindset for that. But I think that my biggest struggle within that is actually embracing the suck of being like carrying more body fat mm -hmm. than I want to and like spending the time in the hole of like, high calories, feeling lethargic, like the struggles that come along with like eating a lot of calories and pushing weight and actually like going to that side of the yeah. uncomfortable. Um, so I want that to go through that phase to have an understanding of what that looks like. Um, I just want to get bigger. So it's funny. Uh, my superpower has never been to be lean or that I, that I could get lean, right? But it is now. And you and I are in the same same exact boat. Uh, whenever I start to see like abs go, I'm like, Ben, we gotta go and cut. Like, you're good. Like, keep going for a little bit longer. And and it's funny because even not this last book, but the, the previous one we did, um, you know, I was up to like four thousand calories. And I'm like, is my mind gonna be able to switch back to the discipline to go and do it? And all it all it took was, okay, it's time to cut calories now. And we went more aggressive this time. I think we dropped like, you know, 500 calories or something like that. We're out the bed, which you don't normally do. You know, we normally do like 200 at a time just to kind of get your body adjusted. But maybe it was even 700 calories or something like that. I think it was 700. Um, and literally that day, done. You know, like when, when I saw the check-in, I, I could have like spaced it out a day just to like prepare myself for I it. I think you said, it was just, you, you said I'm pretty sure it was this time around. We dropped the calories and you went out for ice cream that night or something. You were yeah. like, no, I don't have the, it was like the instant yeah. change. It was like, no, I don't, it's yeah. not. I don't have the, I don't have the calories for it. I don't have that. It's, you got to ask me yesterday. I came all day long, that's, but today. That's right. Not today. <laughs> and, and, and it's, and it's that, that flip of a switch that, yeah. that, you know, we've disciplined ourselves with to be able to go and do. And, and I, I fully believe that you'll be able to do it, but we have to also, the good news is you and I will be doing the, pretty much the exact same program, right? Um, you know, my, my goal is, uh, once we kick this off after Vegas, to bulk up for probably the next eight months or so to build as much muscle mass as possible and then be lean again back in Vegas time for next year. And we're going to get to uncomfortable spots for both of us, right? We're going to be fairly large and... <laughs> oh my God, I'm so fat. I'm so fat. Me, me, me too, I'm, I'm so fat too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this ice cream, <laughs> but it's in my calorie macro count, so it's good. <laughs> but uh, but it's, we're going to be able to share that together and uh, you know be able to support each other for, for when we go and do it. And I think it's going to be a learning lesson for both of us, but the support that we have, I think, for one another is going to be there. What do you think your biggest challenges are going to be uh, going through this for the next eight months or so as we, we start to plan this out? Um, but I'll also say, you know, what do you think, you know, Aaron, you know, I had to talk to Aaron about this too. I said, listen, you know, she, she, she made a comment to me about, uh, she's like, man, she's like physique wise, you know, spot on. She's like, you lean, look great. And I said, well, just so you know, this is what I'm looking at. She's like, you're good, do it. You know, but what, what, do, you, what do you think uh, Kay's going to think about? And, you know, do you have any, any reservations there? Or? I think supportive. Yeah. Yeah. Like no issues with that at all. Yeah. I think my, my biggest struggle will be, well, I think my biggest struggle at the minute is actually being quote unquote 
busy and making time for it. Like I'm easy, you know, I guess full transparency because we're doing this. Yeah. You know, I'm quite easy to be like, oh, I'll, just, I'll sack off training. Like I don't, I don't, I've seen it. Yeah. I don't feel like I need to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's easy for me to not do it. Like I don't have a need to, to go and train. Like if I miss a day, fine. Um, so actually committing to actually getting it done and setting the time. I want to really get a regimented schedule that if it's if my training is in my calendar, nothing that doesn't change. Um, I think one big thing about that will be either finding a new gym or else putting something in the house that I can go and train if it's like a shorter amount of time yeah. that I don't get the full session or whatever else. Um, outside of that, I think I should be okay. I don't know. It depends what you get me to do. But I, I have I some. I have some. Some really cool ideas because you know. I, you, I, well, I guess you know me. So, what do you think my struggles over the next eight months will be? Uh, the the biggest time for you is is you you have an exploding business, right? Your business is growing. Um, you're figuring out ways to navigate that to ensure the consistency, quality, to be able to service others, to still provide content, you know, back to the community and industry. Um, and and I think your biggest challenge is, is that once you know you're you'll you'll spend an entire day, you know, optimizing you know, a, a spreadsheet or, you know, a, a new, you know, program that you're going to release. Right. And, and business always is precedent, you know, precedent because you, you have to grow that obviously for, for your well-being and what your, your goals are in life, but I can easily see you getting lost in that and not going and doing it. So I have a couple of ideas that I'm not going to introduce yet, but I have a couple of ideas to, to keep that interesting, um, to, to, to give you some goals. If you hit uh, rewards or goals, if you hit, uh, the the lifts for that week or your your progress for that week, uh, and then I also am going to introduce finisher moves, which are going to be you know our our designated you know finisher moves, and I think that's kind of a cool thing. Yeah. So I yeah. thought about this for uh, I've been thinking about this for a little bit, but um, in in uh, like uh, adding a section either at the check in uh, or on Discord, and I, I can do this with the, the bots, um, yeah. but you can add like you know like a superhero character or whatever, but. You designate their their superhero move, okay? And you know, so mine would be deadlift. Yours would be RDL. So yeah. everybody could have their own superhero move that is their specialized so, right, move. So only if I get my full XP for the week, do I right. get the D? Okay, right, okay. right. So we're gamifying the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, and I think that would work out well for you. And 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 by the way, it happens to be public. Yeah. So I mean, well, I mean, we're gonna talk. About, well, I imagine we're gonna talk about it every week at some point. Right. Right. So, so but everybody's I mean, invested. That's the right. Thousands of people that listen are invested in the. That's program. right. So now, now you have thousands of people riding on your shoulders for you to go and get that workout in uh, to make sure it's done. But it'll be fun and exciting. I think it'll be some good, good, good ways. It will. And, and I already started working on it a little bit to, to make it automated so I don't have to do this every week and then, you know, let's screw it. Um, Am I going to be talking like AI Dave from the second? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a fake Dave. You're not going to even know it's not, not me. Um, I already automated the whole next next six months. But uh, no, but I, I think, you know, for you, the, the business is obviously a priority and making sure you have to find time. And, and but not an excuse because it's not. if you said the same thing to me, yeah. I'd tell you shut the fuck up and get all right. it. So. Exactly right. I'm going to tell you to shut the fuck up and get on with it. And I, and I mean, again, full of transparency, like, that was one of the things that I didn't like about James. Mm -hmm. He was giving me too many buy balls. I'm like, oh, can you give me a buy ball? I'm like, all right. Do you know I mean? like I, yeah, like I understand, man. You're so busy, whatever. No, yeah, no, don't get, tell me. Like, shut the fuck up and get on with this. You're actually have to train twice tomorrow yeah. because yeah. you fucking missed this last day. Yeah. So yeah. it's gonna suck ass for you today. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. exactly. But you know, it's it's interesting because like we always make the excuses of time, and you know, in a perfect ideal situational world, I would spend at least two hours lifting. Like that's perfect for me. Like if I have two hours to block off, two hours is a great amount of time. But truth of the matter is, like yesterday, if you take out all the bullshitting and having fun we were doing, that workout was an hour. Yeah. So that's it. And we only did, you know, you look we at took ten minutes to like psych yourself up to lift the two hundred pound dumbbell. That was, <laughs> <laughs> and and go buy straps because we couldn't yeah. lift it ourselves. Um, and so, uh, uh, you know, when you look at that, and you look at at the time it took us to do that, I mean, my legs were destroyed, yeah. like destroyed, right? And we were both at the end of the day were exhausted. Like we we had expunged all energy in that workout in that hour. And so the truth of the matter is you can get a phenomenal workout in 30, 45 minutes to an hour, right? If you have if you have so to. So my question to you as my coach tonight, and for example, if I train early in the day and I feel like that, like how do I get through the rest of my day for work and actual stuff that I need to do? Alcohol. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I, I mean I, I it's true, but I mean I think, you know, f for me, the the tiredness that I normally get for lifting isn't always there like that, right? Um, well, the thing about it is, like, I like to train later on in the day, so I can get all my stuff done before, truthfully. Yeah, you can do it in the morning or afternoon, doesn't matter. But, but I mean, I'm not training in the morning, just so you know. Well, it's gonna be 5 a.m., but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Try new things, Ben. Try new things. 
No, I mean, uh, uh, you do do like training in the in the afternoons or evenings, which is which is yeah. good. Which actually lines up for for the time because usually when you're waking, when I'm waking up, you're already heading to the gym, and then we're at the gym pretty much at the same time, kind of kind of shooting shit. So, um, I think you know the the training stuff though for me when I lift in the morning, I have that sense of accomplishment, and it actually gives me more energy. Um, but one of the things that that I've been investigating, and and I think investigating <laughs> that I'm probably gonna do as well is cold plunge. Um, in the morning. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, for real. Yeah. So this is an exclusive. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Um, and, and there's, there's, there's one specific benefit that I care about, and this is really the only benefit I care about. Um, there's, you know, the, the, um, uh, the, the brown fat, you know, par, uh, part, which is actually the good fat you want to want to be building up the reduction in inflammation. Everything else is a great thing. The big thing with cold plunges is that, um, you have sustained dopamine release that lasts, you know, anywhere between four to seven hours afterwards, whereas traditional dopamine releases is going to be, you know, anywhere between like 30 minutes to an hour max, right? So you're getting extended feel good juice mm -hmm. in your body. But even Kyle was saying that he's been doing, yeah. I think he's just saying he's been doing like trying to get like 11 minutes across the week. Um, and he says like he feels incredible. Like whenever he gets out for like two, three hours after he feels up, like why can I not feel like this all the time? So my, my goal is cold plunge right before I work out, then go work out, then sauna. So work out add, again. Just to add to the thousands of people who um, are listening that will hold you accountable, we need like visuals every morning of you with a in the cold plunge <laughs> selfie in the cold plunge. The cold plunge. I'll, I'll have a twenty four seven cold plunge cam for Dave. <laughs> Promise no naked uh, Dave in there. Um, but the funny part is you're going to hear me screaming like a bitch because I hate cold. I hate it. Um, but I mean, those are things you can do to optimize, you know, your energy levels and stuff like that. It's somebody asked me about it. I think it was actually Thomas and Jen. We were in Pittsburgh. And we were driving somewhere and Thomas asked me how I got you around to the cold yet. And I was like, all the science, all the studies, everything that he reads, everything that he goes all in, it's the one thing that he will not do. But yeah. here, here we are. Yeah, here we are. It's, it's taking me a while to get there. And, um, you know, I, I will say it's, it's, it's a lot for me because I really do hate the cold. Like I, I, I just, and there, and I've talked. That's good though. Yeah. Good but I, I have talked good. about some of the Brand reasons why too, I think. Gift good in at this point on the thing. Um, I know you've talked, I know you've talked about why, and that was the reason that I didn't press it. Um, but I think it's good to put yourself in that, like, to know that you can do the hard things. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. that's what it's yeah. all about. Like, that's, you know, I, I always go back and chat back and forth with Akira. Like, one of the biggest things that I got from training in general is the knowledge and the confidence in myself that I can do difficult things and hard things. So that is just an extension of that for you. Yep. And I'm excited about it. Um, and it's something that I think I continue to. I'm to excited first thing in the morning when you're looking at the thing. And you're like, <laughs> but there's, I mean, you know, talking about, you know, we we talk about, you know, hacking your health and, and things like that. There are other things that you can do to kind of optimize health. Um, you know, there's stimulant windows for caffeine. Um, there's, you know, pharmaceutical routes you can go. Like, you know, you I've talked about this before, but modafinil is a yeah. a great one. You know, that I, I get prescribed every so often for when I need to have like concentration, focus, and energy. I don't do it every day. Um, you know, maybe like you know, once or twice a month. Um, but modafinil, they, it's a non, you know, addictive, when I say non addictive, you know, you could get addicted to anything, but, um, it's not like Adderall, for example, which has highly addictive, uh, personalities. Plus it's an SSRI, I believe, or whatever, however it works, but modafinil is not, um, and it just, uh, increases, uh, your dopamine levels as well as, um, your neuroreceptor. So, um, a lot of people that take modafinil, um, will have like hyper-focus. Um, so days where I need to like get stuff done, you know, and I know it's going to be a really busy day and stay alert and wake. Um, Adafinil is often used for narcolepsy folks where mm -hmm. they um, uh, fall asleep randomly at night and it keeps keeps you up um, as well. So it allows you to stay awake, stay energetic the whole day, but also highly focused. And notice I'm like a chatterbox when I do it too. Like yeah, I'll, I'll same, talk a ton. Same, same. Um, so it gives me a little bit of confidence. I also find though, it, it, I need to be very careful with it because it, whatever the thing, if I get distracted by something, then I'm hyper-focused on that thing. Yes. Like if I'm like, you know, I'm working and then I'm on Instagram, like an hour later, I'm still on Instagram. Yes. Like I, so I've done know. the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'll be like an hour later. I'm like, what the hell just happened? I got nothing done. But if I'm, I've just if I'm, sent Ben 25,000 yeah. really. Yeah. But, You've but seen those where it's like yeah. drop, 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 yeah, yeah. Instagram, 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 Instagram. Dave, Dave took a daffodil yeah. today. So, uh, and I, mean, I say it to you, I'm like, you took a daffodil today, yeah, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. But, uh, um, like, you know, and voice notes back to back. I've got this idea, 10 voice notes. Yeah. And there's, there's also, um, other supplementations. Um, what I thought was interesting recently was, um, the, uh, and this is a very taboo and controversial uh, subject for, for a lot of folks, especially in this industry, because it's not highly researched, but it's Kratom. And uh, uh, not to get derailed on, on a whole bunch of conversations here, but uh, Kratom's an interesting like one. Initial consultations will not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but Kratom's an interesting one if, if, if those have hadn't heard for it. And, and Huberman just came out with a recent podcast kind of warning about um, its, its implications because it hits the same receptors as opioids. Now, it's not a, an opioid directly. Um, and, uh, uh, 
and a lot obviously opioids get a really bad bad rap for for legitimate reasons. I mean, you have like oxycodone and things like that that you know are obviously pharmaceuticals that are made for that. Um, but kratom is a natural leaf that that um, you know has been been used for thousands of years. And um, now they have like extract forms. It's legal to buy in like supplementation stores. Not delicious. It's, it's not, not delicious it's at all. It's not pleasant to taste. Um, what I can say is I, I've, I've, I've tried Kratom every so often. Uh, I've never had an issue with it. Uh, I like the way I feel on it. Um, you know, and, and it's, I use a very low dosages of it. And it's usually um, to be more of a relaxing slash pain relief uh, type of thing. Um, I am very careful uh, with it just because of, of the, the stigmas of, of, that it doesn't seem to be highly addictive in the nature of like all the other ones, um, but again, you never know, and there's not you know not a ton of research on it. Everything that's out there either says it's it's the devil or it's the most amazing thing that's ever been released in, in life. Um, for me, I just you know like kind of like the chill, happy, calm you know feeling that I that I get with it um, every so often. But I mean, I'm at a point now where it's like once every few months, you know, things like that if I if I need to, but. The other um, one, again, not to derail the conversation, yeah. is nicotine. Like, I don't, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I was really surprised when you said it to me. I'm like, I, the thing I think of nicotine is cancer and, and smoking cigarettes. <laughs> I mean, there are, much, phenomenal... there, are much, there are much better ways to yeah. utilize nicotine than actually smoking. Um, I, I don't know the full science behind it, but it's something to do with it. It opens up the neural pathways, and it's something that I use quite regularly. So um, Huberman had talked about it on a podcast before, too. And it was actually the, the uh, Joe Rogan. Aubrey, Aubrey Marcus book when they mentioned yeah. it initially. Whenever yeah. he talks about whenever I first started the... Cool charge, and they talk about nicotine and that as well. Well, it's funny because like you gave me the the nicotine gum, and there's like there's like the kind of mild branded, version, branded, the mild, branded. and then the insane one. You gave me the insane one, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it like maybe like my my throat felt like it was closing, and it was like real potent, and I was like, oh my god, I'm dying. And then afterwards, once I got through like the dying phase, it was it was fine. But um, you know, but nicotine, you know, obviously gets a bad rap. But from Do your a, own research, everybody, by the way, don't be going by what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but nicotine in, in general, not combined with all the chemicals and bullshit they're in there, isn't isn't bad for you in, in in normal dosages. Just like with anything, I think it's the same thing with like kratom. Yeah. You know, if you're taking kratom in, in normal dosages, not these extreme you know volume copious amounts, um, it can be a phenomenal thing to to you know increase your productivity as well as um, everything you're doing. Now again, you know, with kratom. Uh, you know, I know a lot of folks that, that take it uh, and and do well with it. And I've never met anybody that that is like abusing it or anything. But again, you want to be careful with anything you're trying. And Huberman specifically said, he's like, if you haven't tried cream before, don't try it, right? You know, just basically like, why, why mess with something, yeah, right? Yeah. But I don't want to disclude, you know, disclude that, that there's a lot of good research coming out there around um, some of the benefits of it, uh, the, uh, the, the neural pathways, the your ability to feel feel good and euphoric, um, you know, but it's not like a high. You're not getting high off of something. It's not a, a thing like you're you're smoking pot or whatever. And I'm not saying pot's bad. You know, there's, there's some good stuff behind pot too. Don't know if you get uh, much shit done though no, after smoking pot. Right. Different. I would, you know, it's funny. Like I know it's like legal most places. I I haven't touched pot since I was like you know younger, uh, and and just not something I'm interested in. But you know, but I'm not. Anybody wants to, it's, that's totally fine. You know, but from my perspective, like you know, kratom was just one of those things where it's like you know. Remember, uh, my buddy uh, uh, gave me Kratom one time, and he's like, hey, do your research beforehand, just so you know it's going to hit the opioid receptors. I'm like, what? Did you just give me some opium? I mean, I'm like, what? And I was like, I was like, this motherfucker. He's like, he's like, he's doing some oxy on me or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and it wasn't the case. You know, I did my research on it and, um, you know, looked at the, the side effects, looked at the long-term uses, looked at the case studies. And, you know, if, if you take out the government scare tactic of it, um, there's some, I think, some good stuff that, that, that is tucked into there. And I still think there needs to be a lot of research with it. But if you're an already highly addictive personality and what the industry right now is, is, is using it for predominantly is people coming off of drugs, right? Um, where they're using, um, heavy, you know, opioid abuse, you know, type of stuff, uh, fentanyl, things like that. And, um, and this gets them off of it to where they're able to live normal and healthy lifestyles without the abuse of these pharmaceuticals. So it's got some positives in a lot of ways, but if you have addictive personality, I would stay completely away from it. Or if you know, just do your own research, make your own judgments, you know, talk to your doctors, not advocating any of these things. But, you know, for me, you know, I found that nootropics and ways to kind of optimize energy and performance is, is a big thing. So not to do the conversation, but, was, I think but we have completely yeah. derailed the conversation. Yeah. Um, the, the nootropics thing, I mean, from a go back to someone's conversation that we had last week, like I'm in for trying those like alpha yeah. brain and the, um, the dial and stuff from Trained by JP, like all those things that are sort of almost geared towards like hyper focused, like gamers, almost. gamers, like that's yeah, yeah. To me, like I can when get I tried it done. dialing the first time, I was like, wow, dude, like yeah. crazy, yeah. yeah, get shit done, yeah, that dial in some caffeine, some nicotine, you're good to go, yeah. 
Yep. So finding your, your right regimen for you, I think, is important. And that's, you've obviously dialed that in. So getting into the nutrition side, calories, what are you currently at? So you've only gained one pound this entire time, which you probably haven't been tracking calories much. But I haven't been tracking calories at all. I haven't either. Um, where, are <laughs> where are my calories? I would say probably before, I would say it was all on probably about 2,400. So we're going to 6,000? <laughs> whatever, whatever you tell me to do. Can I get a meal plan? <laughs> Trish. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, no, I, I think, you know, we'll be looking at calories. You'll be looking at, you know, progress photos, uh, before and afters, uh, support systems, things like that. And I think what would be kind of cool too, um, and I had this as another idea too, is you do your check-ins at the check-ins with the BC crew. Okay. So you're going to do your, how your progress is going that week. So I do on the weekly call? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to do the, the eval. Everybody here? Okay. Like the, the, not the, all the, like the personal stuff, but like more of like your check-ins or struggles with the week and stuff like that. So part of the BC group check-ins, yeah. we're going to do your check-ins. Okay. I think it'd be so good she, for people to hear. She, so you tell me what to do? Yeah. I've so, seen my ideas are rolling here because... You know, what'll be great too is you're gonna get feedback from from a bunch of people that also care about you. Well, I do think, like I've said this time and time again, like the one thing that I really with the the, the calls on the Wednesdays that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. So with the calls on the Wednesday, like I feel like it's a it, it's a space that I want to create. That I want people to feel like they can come and share whatever's going on, mm-hmm. and I feel like I I can do that too. Like mm-hmm. I don't feel like I'm. I don't want to ever seem like I feel like I'm superior or people think that I'm not human or don't have struggles. So like if I'm struggling, there's always, a, and maybe you've seen this from, you probably have, um, there's always someone on the call will be like, what about you? Like, how are you going? Like, I'll wrap the call up and like Jason or Phil or someone will say like, what's going on with you? And I was always like apprehensive at the start. I was like, no, but I need to feel like I've got my shit together. Like, you know, people are listening to me. But I think the more that I, the more that I'm actually sharing what's actually going on with me or the things that are going on or struggles or whatever it is like the more it sort of solidifies the bond and the relationship with everybody um so me sharing my struggles in those situations i think would be beneficial to me to have yeah. space to do it but yeah. also for everybody to know that 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 it's not always just about the progress because it's one thing that i've realized from doing a lot of the in-person events like it it normalizes people having conversations about having shit weeks and thinking that that's okay because it's easy in the discord to see prs and people losing weight and like then you're like well why the fuck am i not doing all these things because mm-hmm. people aren't talking about the well i've had a shit week or you know mm-hmm. the kids haven't slept or i haven't slept or work's been a shit show or i just fucking find myself eating doritos every single day so it's yep. like normalizing all that stuff from a me perspective as well yep yeah it's cool. be fun yeah fun. yeah it's be fun it's be fun well i mean it's, it's a growing opportunity for everybody too to, to learn more about you and and also you know where you're struggling with and i think at the end of the day, we'll have a good plan for nutrition. We'll have a good plan for, for where you want to go from a, a you know, bulking perspective. And, and I also want to caveat with, like, I joke about the 6,000 calories and bulking. You know, those that are just tuning in and haven't listened, it's progressional, right? Um, it's, you know, let's just say Ben's currently at 2,400, 2,500 calories. And that's kind of his maintenance phase of where he doesn't lose or gain, you know, much weight. And so, you know, the goal would be to, to increase the the calories to where you're probably gaining about a pound to two pounds a week um you know averaging um that so that you're continuously optimizing um the amount of muscle that you can put on and there's some really great studies and if you if you have time check out uh, jeff jeff nippard's bulking versus cutting and then he breaks down a lot of the science there and what they've actually been able to see is that you know when you're in a caloric deficit it's it's not impossible um but it's it's doable to gain muscle then but you have to be really stringent on the amount of amino acids and proteins that you're getting throughout the day, right? So your body always has to have essentially a surplus of protein or else the first thing it's going to get an attack uh, and start doing a down is your muscle. So that's why, you know, when you mentioned wanting to uh, bulk longer for periods of time to get bigger, uh, you know, that's the same way I wish I would have been because most people just want to cut down that weight and then they have no muscle mass to be able to show it. But then you have the conversely opposite, which are, are folks that are continuously in a bulking phase that can never cut down and get that weight down, right? So it's always a blend of the two. So gradual increases gradual decreases are all we're talking about here from a bulking and cutting perspective. And we're never going to get to the 6,000 calories. But if there hits a time where we put on so much muscle mass and by way byproduct is fat, and we're not getting that pound or two muscles that we got to keep increasing calories, right? Um, you know, we might get to, you know, 3,500, 4,000 calories, you know, depending so on. I, I assume that I did. Uh, one of my first coaches online trained by JP. Um, I was probably... 45, 50 pounds a letter than I am now. And he had me on like five and a half thousand calories. 
I understand the process, but like at yeah. that stage, fuck that. And I remember yeah. very so specifically much my post workout meal. Like to this day, it used to take me forty five minutes to an hour to eat. Um, it was two thousand four hundred and something calories itself. It was two two hundred fifty grams of chicken, two microville bags of rice. So. 250 grams uncooked weight, whatever that is, cooked. Two Pop-Tarts, two bagels, two bananas, 50 grams of jam, and 150 grams of Cocoa Pops. Post workout. That's insane. So, I mean, if we yeah. do need to get there, I don't want to do it that way, but yeah. if we do need to get there with calories, like, we're going to see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. You know, a lot of I mean, I mean the, the good news with you is you you have the natural ability to to lean down very quickly, right? Um, and to shed that weight. So, we're going to see how, how it goes. Progress photos. I promise I'll be your best client ever. <laughs> You're my first and only client. <laughs> it's like it's like my, my one daughter saying I'm the best daughter ever. You're my yeah. only daughter, you know? So. <laughs> yeah, but not I. That's also right. your worst client. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look forward to it, dude. It's going to be a good good opportunity to, to, to do this. I'm really excited about it, and I appreciate the trust in me uh, to go and do it. And, uh, you know, catch in for the next few episodes to hear uh, how this is oh, progressing cool. and, you know, throughout the next uh, six to eight months of, of this bulking phase as we go through and see where it lands us. Can be can be a disaster. Ben like quits training completely. He like you know <laughs> all my clients are going to go to the. <laughs> <laughs> so by the way, I'm quitting security and we're starting my own personal training business. By the way, here guys, um, the long game. Yeah, no, I think it's gonna be awesome, man. I can look forward to it and uh, look forward to spending the rest of the week with you guys. Uh, you and Ryan here is obviously recording us, so Ryan, Ryan appreciate all the photos. For Dude, that who doesn't know. that that picture you took of me with the. Uh, like I said to him today, yeah. I was like, so we put the the three photos together, and it's like. Uh, Dragon's Lair logo, then you at the bottom looking all fucking jacked and like extension. I'm just texting in the photo above. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Thanks. Ryan nailed the best picture of me ever, uh, which the best picture previously was the best picture ever. He continuously dub, uh, up his game. And uh, it was me doing the leg extensions, but my, my was, I was struggling because it was run the rack, of course, because we're idiots. Um, and, uh, and my muscles were like just... like 50 pounds on the, on the yeah, thing. Was, I think that was for 50, it was for 50 pounds. Yeah, because my muscles were so dead. I couldn't even do a leg extension for 50 pounds. Yeah. But uh, yeah, well, look forward to it, man. It's going to be fun. And we'll catch up uh, and tune in for another week's episode uh, next week. Same time, same place. And we'll not be in Vegas ass. next week. We'll not oh, be in we Vegas. we might be, actually. We'll not be. We'll not we be. We might have to record over here. Yeah. All right. See you next week. See you next week. See you next week.